So, hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome. My name is Martin, uh, I'm from company Content.ai, and today I will, as you guessed, probably talk about AI. Uh, before we start, just some housekeeping. It's gonna be better if you put your headphones on because you will hear it more clearly. So, if there are some free headphones around you, uh, put them on. So, you've today probably heard a lot of things about AI from different vendors, different companies. And today my goal is not to pitch you another product, to pitch you how awesome AI is. Instead, I wanna challenge your minds a bit, and I wanna talk about the amazing opportunities you will get when you start getting into the world of AI, but also about some real problems and challenges that will appear as you dig deeper and your adoption grows. But because you will hear today and other days a lot about ROI, I also want to give you something back, something that you can take home or to your colleagues. And my goal today is talk about these problems, but also give you some practical tips and takeaways uh, that you can discuss with your peers and colleagues. So let's get to it. And we need to first do some reality check because if you are still a non-believer in AI, I have a bad news for you. There's no way back. No matter how you like it, whether you're a fan or you hate it, AI is going to stay. In some form or another, it will stay and it will have a massive impact. And it's, it's not just me who thinks that. There's actually a lot of quite smart folks uh, at Gartner who actually run a survey um, among marketers, thousands of them. And this is the data they come with. So 76% of marketers are somewhat playing with AI today already. 25% of them are planning to integrate that in their workflows today, or this year actually. And every single person they talk to believes this is going to be a regular part of their tech stack within six years. So as you see, it is not gonna go away. And there are different reasons why people are jumping on AI, there are different, I would call them data reasons, right? So there are different returns, there are financial returns, right? It's easier uh, and faster to create new content, so you need to spend less money to create content. It is also takes less people to do so, so you save time, you, you're faster to market, you get some procedural returns. And there are some, something called experiential returns, so it's easier for you to create new variants of content. It's easier for you these days more than ever to create different variants of content, whether it's a different language variations, different localizations, or whether you just wanna generate more um, variants for your A-B testing or multivariant testing. But there is one aspect that is not being talked enough in my opinion, and that is aspect of creativity returns. And there are some companies that are completely dominating the game. And one company, I would guess that you would not expect it are leading the AI game. And that is Coca-Cola. And if you're not watching Coca-Cola, when it comes to using generative AI in their marketing, you should put them on your radar. Because these guys are the number one company utilizing it. There are different ways. And here are just some recent examples. So, a couple of weeks ago, Coca-Cola launched their first AI co-created drink. So you think, what is this bollocks? How can AI co-create a drink, right? Well, they actually were smart about it. So what they did, they feed it uh, the different pairings of flavors to AI and they were searching for good combinations. And based on that, they decided that they're gonna fuse it with their all other recipes and that's how AI co-created a drink. And it's a limited edition of Coca-Cola. Uh, they have different variants, but they also launched an amazing campaign going with it. This QR code was generated as a part of that campaign. And that QR code led to an uh, application where you could actually take a photo of your surroundings and it would give you a vision of the future. So it would use generative AI to show you how the future can look like. So again, a very nice momentum. But the aspect that I liked the most recently about Coca-Cola, what they did was their 
uh, Coca-Cola Masterpiece campaign. In this campaign, then used generative AI to recreate famous paintings of the famous artists around the world, and they included a Coca-Cola bottle in it. Um, if you haven't seen the video, I really encourage you because they used the AI to generate the images and then use the visual effects to really animate and bring it to life, which was very, very amazing. And Coca-Cola did something no one else did. They talked about the possibilities, how can AI enable them and the creativity they have in their team. And this is, the f here comes the first takeaway from my session. Actually, do not underestimate the opportunity AI brings. Don't just think that AI is good for generating texts and LinkedIn posts. Don't be boring. Really use it to drive the creativity in your teams because what AI is doing, it is literally democratizing creativity in everyone. Everyone now, even though I'm not a um, professional content writer, I can now write content with the assistance of AI because it will help me. It's not gonna be perfect, but I can create. The same way everyone on your team can create and you can unlock crazy ideas. And this world needs more crazy ideas because it will help your content to pop. You will stand out. And this is what really matters because that brings me to the second challenge of using AI today. And the challenge is, yes, you can create content faster, you can create more content, but well, so does everyone else, right? The, t the tools are available to everyone. Everyone can simply go and start a ChatGPT account and can just use it. There's no breaks, right? Um, so everyone will actually use them because there are benefits for them. We've already discussed them. So what does it mean for your content production and your content strategy? What happens? And there is actually a nice visualization uh, from uh, Chief Martek, guys. Um, so what happens when you made this technology to create available for everyone? Well, everyone will create. So what happens, the amount of content you will create will just flood everyone. We've had pressure on creating content year over year, year over year. But we are going to face exponential growth of content. So what happens uh, when you flood everyone with content. Well, people will stop recep re like receiving your message. They will shut down their receptors because they are already tired. So you need to start thinking about how your audience is consuming content. You need to rethink your content competition because there are two aspects. First of all, I bet there is not a single person in this whole room who would sit on Friday night take their phone and talk to themselves. I wish there was more content to consume. There's not a single person like that, right? Instead, you'll get people like this. And all that content that they scroll within 30 seconds, someone had to create, someone had to pay, and someone had to actually spend time on it. So, and it was just dismissed within five seconds. So it is very important that your content stand out. But why you need to rethink your content competition is you're no longer in a game when you are competed with the same brands in your industry. We are in a game where we compete for attention. So if you are a Nike, your competition is no longer just Adidas. Your competition is Netflix. Your competition are those guys who are creating reels on Instagram. Your competition are the guys who post professional content on LinkedIn. Everyone wants a piece of my attention, but I have only so much to give. So you need to think about your consumers, where they consume content, and how to get their attention. That leads me to the second point that is related to this challenge. You need to start thinking about the data about your content. You need to understand how your content is performing and why. If you don't have a person today on your team that is analyzing why certain content is performing and why it's not. If you don't have tools that help you with that, you will get lost. Because what happens in a world where you just produce more, you will just produce more crap. 
I'm sorry, I will be direct as, as that because the more you you will expand your footprint, but does it really matter when it's ignored and it's scrolled away? What is the ROI you get there? You just produce more, right? So you need to think about how the data uh, looks like for your use. Now, so, okay, we got it. AI is awesome, we wanna create, what now? Well, we wanna start creating, right? And there was a lot of discussion um, whether AI is going to take jobs, I don't think so. People knowing how to use AI will take your jobs. And I'm gonna show you why. Because if you actually try to use AI, it's not that e as easy as it sounds, right? It's not as easy to get some meaningful results. I have two examples for you. So I asked ChatGPT to generate me a content for my e-commerce site about Fairtrade Coffee. Right, this was a very generic prompt, right? And this is what I got. Then I tried to specify it a bit further. I got much better results. Now think about if I specified some additional parameters, if I specified the tone of voice, I wanna have that. If I specified the audience, if I specified some branded guidelines, and if I just maybe had a conversation uh, uh, with the tool and maybe specified it further and narrowed it down, I would got much better results. But I would not get it like, hey, just write me a converting blog post, done. It doesn't work like that. Using AI is quite difficult to get some meaningful and performing results. And it's actually quite still simple when it comes to text. But when you think images, when you think video, it gets much, much more complicated. This picture was actually generated by Midjourney, one of the AI generative tools. And it's awesome. It's almost photorealistic, right? But there above, you see the prompt that was used to generate this picture. And it's no joke. You need to understand the composition. You need to understand what you're trying to create. And you also need to understand photography because you need to specify the lenses. You need to specify the lightning. You need to specify the film. You can get results like that already today, but it is difficult. You have to have the skill. So that brings me to my two next takeaways. First of all, you need to invest into good AI training. There is an abundance of different courses, free courses that you can take today or members of your team to get even basic level of prompt engineering knowledge. It's very important. There are additional some other trainings and more will pop up, but you need to invest in training your skill sets because getting average results and getting amazing results, there's a lot of skills involved. And second one is you need to rethink your future hiring because in six to 12 months, I guarantee you, you will be hiring completely different people to your creative teams that you are hiring today. You will be looking for a talent that is going to be rare, talent that is, I call them AI enabled. They know what they want to do. They know how to use the tools and they have the skill set. And these people are going to be expensive. So you need to think whether now is a good time to rethink what is the amount of people like that you will need in your teams. Second, you also need to rethink what is the ratio of creative folks to technical folks to specialized roles because AI is, as I said, it's enabling the creativity in your teams. So maybe it's gonna be better to have more creative folks who can generate crazy ideas that will then make it to life. So hiring is going to be a major pillar and you should not underestimate it because you will need those people to get those amazing results. Now, if you walk around this room today you will hear a lot of pitches and a lot of different tools are today integrating AI. Well, I'm gonna tell you one thing. In two years, every single tool on this planet will have a certain AI capabilities. What will differ is how, what they do with them, right? And because two different tools do and utilize the same technology, doesn't mean you will get the same value. And it's all right. It is good thing because Today we are playing with technology that is essentially going to be standardized as a rich text editor. But there are some additional value points. Again, I will show you. So 
on the slide you see four tools essentially doing the same thing. In all these four tools, I ask them to improve my writing. So you see Notion, you see DeepL, you see Grammarly, and you see Content.ai. Each is working slightly different. Each is optimized for different results. So well, in case of Content.ai, it's optimized for stri stripping things like brand, uh, tone, um, tone of language, and applying it from other content to a new one. In case of Grammarly, it is optimized for grammar checks and, and generating more variants. DeepL is actually work improving different variants of the same words, so it's more like advanced thesaurus. Um, so you get a lot of different use cases. And each tool that is on the slide has its place in the world. What is difficult is that you need to realize what is your use case? Where do you are trying to get the value? Do you have people that are struggling with grammar, like I am? Do you have more people who need more consistency checks on their brand tone and, and when it comes to content? Or do you need people who just need to get some ideas how the content can be improved because they're just not creative enough? So you need to go out, and when you are looking around places, think about the use case. Think what is currently missing in your teams. What is the value that they're looking for? and that these tools can provide. Because each tool will have a slightly different use case, and they might be relevant to you, but they might also not be relevant, and just because they utilize AI is not the reason to just to buy them, right? But when you are around, when you are f talking to these pitches, when you are thinking about the different tools, and when you are actually experimenting, you also need to be cautious, because AI to a degree works like a black magic. You just throw a bunch of data in it and something else came out. And similar like this statement, you should not really trust with your company data with a company that doesn't have a proper guidelines behind it because you could end up like this. And as we go, as the adoption is gonna go further, we'll see, we'll hear more cases like this. And it's not uncommon that you have marketing teams where folks take the confidential data and just shove it to the ChatGPT that is free. And that model, ladies and gentlemen, is open. It is teaching on what you put in it, and you are taking your strategic asset, which is content, and you're just throwing it away. If I told you two years ago that you are going to take your content, something that costs money, time, and it's confidential, just gonna throw it out like that. You would think I'm crazy, but there are teams who are doing this today. So when you are thinking about adoption of these tools, think about your due diligence, because it is more important these days than ever. There's a lot of scams happening when it comes to AI. You, you, there was a famous case about the was the Barbie Heimer trend hype going on around. And there was, you see, there was a lot of these Barbie, Barbie eyes me photos, basically you upload your photo, a personal information, and it would create a, a Barbie version of you. But if you actually read the terms of conditions of the company, there were no guarantees and then own your photos. Did you upload them? Is this what you want? And the same applies to your, uh, content data. So next time when you are trying to use a new solution, well, how, what are the ways how you can tell that actually this is a serious thing and it's not just um, someone trying to write the AI hype, right? So there are a few things you can ask. What is the roadmap like for the technology? What is the technology that is used to power this engine? Is this running in a sandbox environment or is this an open version that is shared and my data is going to be shared elsewhere. So these are the questions you would normally ask about uh, about other software that you normally use uh, when you are actually purchasing it. But for some reason, it is widely ignored today because everyone wants to jump on the hype train, right? So don't do this because it will cost you money. And you can also in the near future uh, face a massive fines. And the reason for it is the market is really evolving fast, and there is already some legislation shaping up 
in EU, similar to GDPR, there is a EU Act coming. I'm not saying it's coming within two or three months, but it is coming sooner or later. Uh, so there are already some frameworks that can tell that the vendor is prepared for this uh, 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 act that is coming. But uh, what I also wanted to show with this slide is that the market is really, really evolving fast. These two announcements from Microsoft and OpenAI are a week old. Last week, Microsoft announced that they are going to roll out their co-pilot. OpenAI announced their new version of DALI. Yesterday, Spotify announced their new translation functionality for their podcasts. There is something literally happening every single day. And if you are serious about leveraging the technology in your stack, you need to watch the space because it's evolving fast. And some capabilities that were not there today might be there in two weeks or in a month. And at the same time, these guys will catch up. They are pretty slow. Governments in general they are pretty slow. But when it comes to policies and fines, they move fast. So And they're brutal. And you don't want to be the company that makes the news that, hey, we just accidentally leaked uh, hundreds of thousands of personal information. So enjoy the space. It's really, really moving fast. It's one of the exciting space I've been into over my whole career. It's moving. I've never seen anything like this moving so fast. Watch the market, stay curious. Now, we, we, we heard a lot about the tooling and the AI is amazing and they can do amazing things. But after all, AI is just a tool. And I have a one extra takeaway for you. And that takeaway is AI is just a tool. It is not important how you create things. It is important what you create. If you keep this in mind, what is your goal? What is you trying to create? What is you trying to enable? You will be successful, whether you use AI or not. AI is the tool. It's not the tool that matters. It's the amazing content creativity house that you are building with it. So keep this in mind, and you will be successful with your efforts. And this is going to be all from my side. And I think, guys, we have a couple minutes for a question or two. So if there are any questions, I'm, I'm happy to answer them. Any questions? Okay.